So we're going to start off by taking a look at how motion blur works within After Effects, how we can apply it to different layers, some of the settings we can alter to create different kinds of motion blur, and just cover some of the things that you might want to remember when you're using motion blur in your projects. So just to start off with, I am going to be covering some of the tools in After Effects that I will already expect you to know. So if you're wondering why I'm not going into too much depth about keyframing or other things, how to create shapes, etc., then that is something to bear in mind. But don't worry, I will be making videos on those very soon. So if they aren't there already, then do check out other videos online to make sure that you're up to date on how to use those tools. If not, they might already be on the channel, depending on when you're actually watching this video. So I'd also highly encourage you to watch those. So let's get started. We're in After Effects. We have a very simple composition. So we have a simple background layer, which is just the background that we have. And what we're going to start off by doing is just creating some shapes that we can move so we can demonstrate how motion blur works. So I'm just going to go to the ellipse tool for which the shortcut is Q and just draw a quick circle holding shift on my keyboard to keep it in proportion and just letting go around here. I'm then going to switch to Y on my keyboard and then pressing off the layer once and then pressing on it once again. This is a very weird thing that After Effects does, but hey, I'm just going to quickly get the anchor point and just hold command or control for windows on my keyboard and make sure that it's centered for our object. This will just help for when we rotate this object or scale the object, it's always going to start from the center. So I'm next going to go to the move tool and just go to align and quickly align it vertically. So it just sits on that halfway point on our vertical axis. So I'm next going to move it just slightly to the left, just holding shift on my keyboard to keep it on that same axis point. And then I'm going to go to the layer, make sure that it's selected and press P on my keyboard and create a new keyframe just by pressing on this stopwatch next to position. I'll then move out probably about three quarters of the way between zero and one second. That's probably not quite three quarters, but hey. And then create a new keyframe just by dragging on the X axis, holding shift on my keyboard to make it move slightly quicker because we haven't got all day and then release it about here. I'm next going to move my indicator just about the same distance, about the same distance between these two points and then just go to my first keyframe, hold command and C on my keyboard to copy or control and C for windows and then command and V to paste or control and V to paste for windows. Then I'll just make sure I quickly select all of the keyframes. And for me, it's hold FN and F9, but for you, it might just be F9, depending on what keyboard you're using. And just by pressing that once, we've now changed our keyframes to ease in and ease out, which will basically just mean they move a bit more smoothly. I'm then also going to add an expression to make sure this loops. So I'm just going to hold Option or LB Alt if you're on Windows and press on the stopwatch next to position. And then type in loop out on my keyboard like so and it should be this option like this and just select that option and then just close the expression and this will basically mean that at the end of our last keyframe it will start all the way back at the beginning and basically loop this every time so our circle should be bouncing from left to right continuously and this is just an easy way to demonstrate how motion blur works by having something that constantly loops over itself so if i just quickly go to the start as you can see, this is what our animation now looks like. So we've just got a very simple animation of our object moving from left to right. So at the moment, we don't actually have any motion blur on our layer. So as you can see, every layer that's being generated, it's the exact same circle that is being reproduced in just a new position. However, if we think about how we actually perceive motion in real life, when you move your hand quickly across your face, as you can see, the hand doesn't appear as a whole load of still images. Instead, we have a blur between all of the movements, which creates this motion blur, and it makes our image move much, much smoother. Now, essentially what we can do is we can replicate this in After Effects. So in order to create this motion blur in After Effects, it's very, very simple. All we have to do is make sure that the motion blur is toggled on for every single layer. So just finding our layer that we have, which is shape one, and just going to this motion blur option and checking this box. So the simple is this kind of three circles, one behind the other. Now, if you can't see these options, all we have to do is go to the top of these columns, right click to where it says columns and just make sure that switches is turned on and just make sure there's a tick next to that and then it should appear. And then you want this option that has the three circles behind each other, which is handily also labeled motion blur. 
And this has basically turned on motion blur both for our composition and also for our layer. So as you can see, our circle now looks very, very different. We have this blur at the edges, which is now creating this smooth motion. So if I just quickly play our animation now, as you can see, it will take a few seconds to render, but after it does that, it now looks much, much smoother when it is moving. Now, just to be able to have a side by side comparison, if I duplicate this layer, just by pressing command and D on my keyboard or control and D for windows, then press P on my keyboard to get up its position properties, select all of the keyframes and just make sure that my indicator is positioned over the one of them, go to the Y value and just drag it down slightly. As you can see, we have a duplicate of our circle. And if I just quickly uncheck the motion blur on this layer, so this is one thing you have to bear in mind. And this is one of the things that you might forget. You always have to turn on motion blur for every single layer. It is obviously possible if I select all of these and hold shift and then press on the motion blur, it will automatically apply motion blur to all of them. But if you don't do that, it won't actually apply motion blur to all of them. So even if you have motion blur turned on for the composition itself, it won't necessarily mean you have motion blur on each layer. So anyway, I've turned motion blur off for this layer just to give us a comparison. So if I press play now and just give it a few seconds to render, then as you can see, the motion between both objects is very, very different. The top object looks much, much smoother, whereas the bottom one feels much, much more rigid. And this basically reflects how shutter speed works in a camera. So the longer the shutter speed, the longer the exposure. So if there's more movement within that exposure time, there'll be more motion blur where the light has been distorted because of the movement of the camera or of the movement of the subject within the image. Whereas if we have a quicker shutter speed or like we have here, no motion blur at all, there'll be less time for light to actually hit the sensor and therefore it will appear less smooth and more rigid in movement. Now, if I just quickly stop that animation, as you can see the side by side comparison, as with this, we have no motion blur at all. Here we have motion blur, which is clearly indicating the edges. Now we can actually also change the motion blur settings. So one thing you always want to do is if you're working with real footage, perhaps you've shot a scene and you actually want to introduce these things within your scene, then you want the camera settings to be the same in order to produce the same amount of motion blur. So in order to do this, what you have to do is go to composition and composition settings, or as you can see, the shortcut is command and K. Then from here, go to advance. I'm just going to move this slightly to the left so we can see our circles. Now I'm not going to be going into too much depth about how cameras work. I will do another entire video on cameras, depth of field, everything for After Effects. But for now, all you have to think about is shutter angle is very similar to shutter speed in a camera. So if you know how that works, then great. But if not, like I said, the higher the shutter speed, or in this case, the lower the shutter angle, the shorter the exposure time, which will mean less motion blur. Whereas the higher the shutter angle or the lower the shutter speed, it's slightly confusing, but hopefully it makes sense. The more motion blur we'll be getting because the exposure time is longer, meaning it's more possible for light to move because of camera movement or subject movement within our image. And the other thing to know is samples per frame. And this does exactly what it says. It's how many samples After Effects takes per frame to calculate the motion blur. So the higher the samples per frame, the smoother the motion blur will become, whereas the lower the samples, the less smooth it will become. So let's just quickly go over those two options. So the lower the shutter angle, so let's say 45 degrees, as you can see, the motion blur becomes much, much less, and this will create a much less smooth motion blur. Whereas if I had a higher shutter angle of say 300, then as you can see, the motion blur is much, much higher and will actually perceive that motion blur as much, much smoother. If I just quickly reset that to 180. Now the samples per frame, as you can see, the default is 16, but say I set it to two. Then as you can see, it's taking much, much less samples and therefore the motion blur won't be as smooth, but rather it itself will also appear rather rigid. Whereas if I set this to much higher, I think the limit is 64. As you can see, the motion blur will be much, much smoother because it's taking many more samples. Now, one thing to bear in mind is the higher the number of samples per frame and the higher the number of the shutter angle, it will take longer for your processor to actually preview those images. 
So in that case, this is where this option for being able to turn off motion blur for your composition comes into great effect because you can actually save memory time by toggling this on and off and only including it when you need to render or really export something. I'm just going to reset the samples per frame back to 16 and then press OK. The next thing I want to show you is how this works for compositions. And this basically mimics how it works for when you import video into After Effects. So if I quickly get this second shape layer that we have and just right click once and go to pre-compose and then just create a new composition. So let's call it circle two, just so I know which one it is and press OK. Then as you can see, this circle is now within this composition. So I can just toggle that one on and off so you know which one that is. If I just quickly open the composition by double clicking on it itself, as you can see, we now have this composition open. So as you can see at the moment, we don't have any motion blur applied to the layer itself. But if I go to the tutorial composition, that was our original composition and check motion blur for this composition and now press play on my keyboard. As you can see, there is still no motion blur being applied to our object. Whereas there is a motion blur to this one, which is our shape layer one. There is no motion blur to our circle two. And you might be wondering why that is because we have told it to apply motion blur to this layer. So why are we not actually creating any motion blur? Well, the reason is it's actually only going to create motion blur if this composition itself is moving. So if I actually move the composition itself, then it will create a motion blur, but any of the material within the composition won't actually have motion blur applied to it. So I'm just going to quickly undo that by pressing Command and Z or Control and Z for Windows. And if I go into the composition itself, then as you can see, if I actually turn on the motion blur for this and go back to the tutorial, the motion blur will be applied, even if I turn this off for the composition layer itself. So that's just one of those things that you have to bear in mind. If you're wondering why when you're turning on motion blur for a composition, there's no motion blur being applied, you've always got to apply it to the layers themselves within the composition in order to get that motion blur. Similarly, if you have the motion blur toggled off for within that composition, it's also not going to be applied within this composition. So once again, if you are going to export, then you do need to make sure you've gone through every composition and turned it back on and that you've turned it on for all of the relevant layers within each composition. Great, so I'm just gonna quickly go back to our main composition and I'm just gonna quickly get rid of these two layers. So just to finish, I'm also going to show you how motion blur looks when we apply it to other objects and use different properties such as scale and rotation. So I'm gonna quickly create a text object by going up here, or as you can see, the shortcut is Command and T, Control and T for Windows. I'm going to create a new text. So let's just call it sample text for now. And then I'll go back to move tool to confirm that choice. Pressing Y on my keyboard just to realign our anchor point. And then pressing V to go back to move move tool. And then going to align and go to center horizontally and center vertically. Great, so I'm just gonna go and press S on my keyboard with the layer selected and get the scale options up. Move my indicator all the way to the start, press on the stopwatch and setting this to zero. And then moving slightly along, creating a new frame of 100%. And then moving slightly further along, duplicating the first one and pasting it there and holding F9 on my keyboard to ease those frames and just option or alt to bring up the expressions and loop out once again. Great, so as you can see, we will now have this very strange animation where basically the title is scaling up and down all the time. But at least this is a very easy way to show you how motion blur works. Actually, I might actually increase the size of it here just to make it much, much more apparent. Great, so now at the moment, as you can see, we have no motion blur applied. So if I just quickly press play by using spacebar, the animation is rather rigid. We can see every frame is 100% sharp. There is no motion between the frames. But when I apply motion blur using the technique that we now know and press spacebar to start the animation, as you can see, it will take a few frames to render. This is 4K. I don't know why I did that, but hey, as you can see, the animation is now much, much smoother. And if I just quickly pause the video, and hold it somewhere in between, you can see how all the motion blur is coming out from this anchor point from where our animation is starting.
Another great thing to notice when you pause an animation like this is that the motion blur is much less in the middle, where the distance between the motion is much smoother. So for example, this M doesn't have very far to go from our original anchor point, but as you can see, the S is traveling much greater distance, which means the motion blur is much, much higher. I'm just going to quickly go back to here, set it to 100, and then undo all of those animations by pressing on the stopwatch, and then quickly pressing R on my keyboard to bring up the rotation. Just move that keyframe that I just created to zero, go to three seconds, and let's do three rotations, and then Option or Alt, and add loop out once again. Now, as you can see, if I turn the motion blur off, after it's rendered, the movement isn't as smooth, but if I drag it back to zero and add the motion blur, after it finishes rendering, you can already see that the motion blur is taking effect on the outer edges, whereas in the middle, it's much, much less. And the motion will be much, much smoother. And this is also a good example of how long it can actually take a computer to process all of the motion blur. So when you are working, you will want to make sure that you toggle this on and off in order to render things quicker. And then only when you really need to apply it or when you're exporting. Great, so those were all the fundamentals of how to use motion blur in After Effects. Let me know in the comments below if there are any other topics that you'd like me to cover and I'll try to make a video on that. And also remember to leave a like on this video if you found it helpful and to subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a After Effects tutorial.